Hi, good morning, sir. Just to check whether my Nobi and Hello. Nobi okay. Hello. Hi, good morning, BC. Uh, please tell me to slow down for two minutes. Huh? You're too close to your front bus. Operating Singapore's bus service is an immense task. From managing a complex network of routes... Then you start picking up the pendulum from the block 666, which is 4.8 kilometer. All right? OK, sure. OK, thank you. Oh. Bye. To unexpected road conditions... ...and harried customers. On the red dot gains unprecedented access into Singapore's biggest bus operator, SBS Transit. While most of Singapore slumbers, Salita Bus Depot, one of 13 hubs across Singapore, is stirring to life. By 5 a.m. on a weekday, about 170 drivers would report for duty. Their mission? To keep Singapore on track and on time. 36-year-old Effendi Ismail is a bus captain. He's in charge of bus service 70, which runs between Yochu Kang and Shenton Way. Since joining SBS Transit less than a year ago, he's had to adopt a new lifestyle. Before I joined SBS, I usually wake up at 7. Uh, now, I have to wake up as early as 4 a.m. Waking up early is the hardest part of my job. To make sure I wake up on time, I put up a few alarms and I have my wife to wake me up. <laughs> Every morning when I step into the canteen, I see a lot of my colleagues. And uh, I see some of them who are uh, from JB. Usually they wake up much earlier than me and I, yeah, I respect them for that. Before he gets behind the wheel, this is what he has to do. Effendi must sign a form declaring he's fit to drive Morning, uh, and prove he's not been drinking alcohol. Okay, pass. Okay. Okay, I just collected the timesheet. I have to check everything by 5.55. At least the Yotoka interchange by 6.04. Once Effendi is given the all clear, it's time to inspect the bus. So every morning, so we have to check uh, the bus, see if any damage, leftover items. And then sometimes the management, they will test us. They will purposely leave behind some items so that they know that we do check the bus, thorough checking. Check the bells, please working. Especially this bell, eh? because it's uh, for the wheelchair bound passengers. And, uh, After inspecting the tyres, engine, and mirrors, Effendi is good to go. But first, he must connect his bus to the nerve center of the bus network. The Ops Control Center at Salita tracks 27 bus services to ensure they run on time. Okay, this is where I usually talk to with my Ops Control Center. 
The drivers talk to operators via a microphone reporting any accidents, traffic jams or onboard incidents. Hey, morning, morning sir. Yeah, Ah, uh, 770. Just to check whether my Nobi and Nobi are okay. Yeah, what, what 50, what 50? Uh, 37S. Now I see you cannot on, but the Nobi I want to capture. Okay, okay, Roger, Roger. Thank you. By 7.30 a.m., Singapore's morning traffic is starting to stack up especially along Paya Lebar Road towards the city. You see the loading is the loading is actually quite high. Currently, uh, there are around 100 odd people. That means uh, passengers are really shoulder to shoulder and it's very cramped. This is this is first signs of uh, peak hour ramping up. There are seven operation control centres or OCCs across Singapore. OCC? Each centre monitors the movements of over 500 buses. Salita OCC covers the expanded route network in Yishun, Angmokyo, and the Central Business District. Francis, can you take Francis now monitors four bus services. His job as an assistant service controller is to ensure each vehicle remains on schedule. The most challenging service is bus 70 which travels through the CBD and is packed at peak hours. At the centre, service controller Deng Liang is in charge of operations. We are the so-called nerve centre, the backbone of the entire bus operations. What keeps me motivated is the bus services that are running under my watch, able to be dispatched out fully on a daily basis. Zi Liang is the kingpin, the most important pin, where it links the truck to the trolley. So it's the pin holding all the controllers together. He keeps us focused on the bigger picture to help us mitigate uh, scenarios that are unforeseen. We monitor the buses that we have on the road through this uh, system called this CFMS, which stands for Common Fleet Management System. Hello, good morning, BC 74558 OCC. CFMS uses GPS locator technology which allows the team to track the bus locations and monitor traffic conditions. I can't lost connection agents cannot hear the cannot. But sometimes, this technology doesn't always work like clockwork. Uh, are you aware that the, the CFMS currently is down? You want to live again? Believe, believe, believe. 17, please, sick, okay, give them, yeah? Hello, Poo. Hello. Yeah, why? Can we also testing? Testing, now, You can take where the bus, The Aokang workshop never sleeps. Teams of technicians and foremen constantly check and repair their fleet of 600 buses. So, from 3.30 hours, I'll be everything, huh? Oh, okay. Bus must be ready, ready. 
buses can operate up to 18 hours a day and require regular maintenance. Each bus goes through a stringent three-hour checkup every two months. Is, is something dripping from there? Yeah, I also see some of the bus here, the engine. Must see, must check, double check. After this, must double check the engine, see whether everything is good or not. Yeah. Before we can release. Yeah. Reason, two days. Uh. It might take a longer time because I, I, I need to check the oil, oil leakage. Okay. It's a quite big mess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Senior technician, 59-year-old Amin Tugiman, is tasked to investigate why the service bus was returned to the depot. Despite having nearly four decades of experience, this presents a tough challenge for Amin. Uh, I can see the residue here. Those are coolant leak. I need to re remove all these parts in order to remove the water pump assembly. That's the tedious part of it. And after that, you have to clean up those uh, old gasket area to make it clear, clear, then I have to fix the new one in. A coolant leak can trigger the bus engine to overheat and damage it. Amin is one of the few technicians at Aokang Depot with the expertise to deal with this issue. Repair times can vary depending on the bus models and faults. Some buses take 30 minutes to fix, while others with major defects can take days. For us, if a good day means uh, there's no bus breakdown, I hope the bus never come back, that's all. If the bus comes back, then uh, we've got a big, big problem. The Aokang workshop has over 100 staff, and it's situated within one of Singapore's oldest bus depot. Opened in 1983, it has been the second home to many senior staff here, including Amin and Jumahat. That time it was in 1973. I got a letter from SBS. I see the, the, what, the contacts are good because the pay is that time $220 only. $220 and then the, plus the uh, free bus ride. So I thought, eh, hey, why not join? <laughs> a lot of changes. Uh. Okay, since 1974, that time I take bus, the bus got no door. Okay, just opening, <laughs> just go up. And then beside that, last time got no icon. Okay, no icon, so open, open the window. So when rain, I uh, all close the window, uh, it all gets stuffy. Bello, okay, I go bow, okay? Okay. Okay, Bello, fine. Wow, well, good time mission takes years, actually. It takes years. Uh, it's not a short. Short term, it takes years to you know understand this uh, engine system. The future is there. It's, it's, it's always there. It's a it's a good place to work. So actually, but then maybe the environment, like see and all this, these uh, younger ones, uh, they're trying to avoid doing all this job. Technicians at the Aokang workshop are between 20 and 60 years old, but only a few are under 30 and hiring younger locals here is a real challenge. Tomorrow, la. tomorrow not much. Today, not enough manpower, don't try that. I think tomorrow, tomorrow, yeah. For us as a deputy manager, we encounter that uh, we are difficult to hire local talents to come into as a technician, as a fresh technician. Mostly we're coming in is uh, from Malaysia. We are trying to hire young, but the concept of this area is like, it's dirty, it's noisy, it's hot. You know, it's challenging, but for our age, it's, uh, you know, it's quite tiring. You know, when you finish work, all your energy drain out. For us, it's uh, something, uh, we're not young anymore, so there's no uh, younger, you know, wants to replace us. We, uh, we operate at 24 hours, uh, seven days a week. So people may assume that we all, it's an office job, aircon room, uh, eight to five job, and they said, no, we, even when we go and sleep, our phone is still beside us. If a whole shop rest, a whole workshop rest one day, I think most of the buses, I think it will stop already, that's for sure. Peak hours looming at Salita OCC, the network's nerve center. But trouble's not far away. Oh dear. Hi, good morning. Is there any 
problem with the server on your end because we are unable to look, see location, comms BC, and it says not connected. The Sanja is hit by a connection problem. Currently, we are having the CFMS issue. We are monitoring the situation for the CFMS connection. Uh, cause it seems uh, a bit unstable right now. The connection is intermittently jumping. Uh. OK, can thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, SD will update woman. They have no, no answer for us. Now they are doing a check. Ziliang and team try to resolve this crisis. But without the CFMS, they cannot communicate with bus captains on the road and cannot determine the actual location of buses. Buses are still plying the road, just that we are unable to talk to them as well. It's all hands on deck as the team tries to keep the situation under control. But it's time to resort to unconventional methods. Their mobile phones. Okay, so right now you want us to arrange the, uh, the bus captain to go to issue interchange to collect the bus. Oh, we are also arranging uh, another speed shift bus uh, for this uh, duty. Yeah. It will be in before 9 a.m. Hey, Yang Tukang, Ricky. Ah. Hey, okay, we have a little bit of a problem. So, let me see if you have a lock-in. Okay, let's go. It is very stressful in the sense that uh, we are being put upon different situations that are sometimes beyond our imagination. We need to react very fast because time doesn't wait for us. With the clock ticking, can the team bring the system back online? Fifty-six-year-old Chua Ek Nguyen is a familiar face at Tua Payo Interchange. He's been the supervisor here for 16 years. Two, three, one, just four. Come in, come in. Xiao Xing, ah, Xiao Xing, ah. Yes, good. Every day we patrol the interchange every one to two hours daily. Now the day people no need a bomb, all right, they can just drive a, our bus or a, a truck to attack people. We look out for unusual items, like uh, people left behind or any suspicious item, any suspicious person. With 20 services running from this transport hub, Passengers often need help finding the right service. Chua's frequent patrols make him the go-to guide. Uh, the CFMS currently is down. Sorry? Over at the Salita OCC, the team's been battling with a connection issue. But finally... Hello, good morning, BC 74558 OCC. 
Ah, good morning, BC. Uh, please help me to slow down for two minutes. The system is back on. Uh, they have managed to rectify the server on their end, so we are able to talk to the captains. Oh, it feels awesome <laughs> to finally be able to speak to my captains in case they need any assistance from my end. So it's back to business for the OCC team and they jump straight into peak hour traffic. In an operational environment, things are very dynamic. We need to learn to think on our feet and uh, react promptly and swiftly to the situation. Yesterday, Armin faced the tricky task of replacing a leaking coolant. If untreated, this leak could cause the bus to overheat and damage the engine. But Armin's investigation revealed even more faults adding to his repair time. Now everything is fixed. I have to refill the coolant bag to the system, to the expansion tank. That's what I'm doing now. Just refill. Once the technicians have completed repair works on each bus, they need to take it for a road test. The bus must pass certain criteria, such as uphill road travel and negotiating sharp bends. OK, now we're going up the slope. I see the charge air, whether there's uh, enough boost air pressure, temperature and everything. So far, it shows good sign. Everything is OK. And with a little help from technology, Armin makes the final checks to ensure the bus is ready for operational duty. Computer may only have a certain path they will analyze a certain fault, but there's also some fault that cannot be detected by the computer itself. So you still need the human touch to deal with it. As a passenger demands more comfortable rides and more frequent of buses, we still need more people to make sure to sustain them. Everything OK? OK. Thank you for watching. With this bus back on the road, Armin gets a brief respite until the next challenge rolls in.